now with UCF Athletic Director Danny White, who's good enough to give us some of his time here on this Wednesday. Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? We're, we're good. I, I don't know if you saw the article from Nicole Auerbach on The Athletic, but it's talking with Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby, talks with some folks like Barry Alvarez who've been on the committee, and it sounds like there is growing support within people who are in the room where it happens. <laughs> Uh, to, I to, did see the article. I thought it was. I thought it was beautiful. What? Well, yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. so excited to see others uh, finally come on board. Did How? Did you ask her if they can change that to this year? <laughs> I haven't asked her. I probably need to do that. Not doing my job, I guess. <laughs> How much do you think, Danny? What your team has done is driving this conversation. I think it's it's been an enormous part of it. I'm just so proud of our 2017 team and our 2018 team and. I think about leaders like Shaquem Griffin and uh, Mackenzie Milton and all of our student athletes and what they've accomplished. Obviously, two different coaching staffs and what they accomplished. 25 straight wins is really hard to do, and I think it's inspired the leaders, You know, some that were quoted today across college football and college athletics at large to recognize that the model just doesn't work. Four teams, you can't call it a playoff, you can't call it a real national champion. Uh, or at least one true national champion with only a four-team playoff. Last year's team proved that. This year's team has proved it again. Uh, and I'm just excited to see people talking about it. I'd love to get it, get the thing fixed. Do, do you think that the combination of you guys and how close Georgia was to getting in despite losing to Alabama and having two losses is like equal-weighted? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that combined with lots of Examples of Power Five conferences not getting in uh, over the the five years. Probably some that didn't think that would happen prior to the the four team arrangement. Um, you know, we have last year where last year's playoff champion didn't even win their division or their conference. Um, so there's just been a, a lot of I think things we could point to that maybe help people recognize that four is a lot better than two. Two is a lot better than nothing, but. It's it's still not we're still not there, and I think an 18 playoff would be great for the game. Let's get to the other news of the week, Danny. Have you been looking inward much lately? <laughs> we look inward every day. We're working our tails off to build what we think will be a perennial top 25 athletic so, department here at UCF. But uh, uh, that, 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 that's all we can do. We can't control uh, uh, a lot of factors outside of UCF. Can. You know, you hear Scott Strickland say, hey, we we would do the same deal with UCF that we've done with USF, which is a, a two-for-one. So that would be uh, you go to Gainesville twice and play Florida, and Florida would come to you once. And you've said, no, we want to do a home-and-home, and, home, and that's what we're going to do. Do you think that you're being obstinate there? Do you, do you think that that's going to keep you from getting these kind of games? I think that it's it's a great example of the inequity that we're dealing with. So you, first of all, it seems like the committee each year has focused on different things. And when, when we come up and our potential uh, for inclusion in a 14 playoff, which hopefully is a short term problem, hopefully we get to an 18 playoff, but, and so I will say, I feel for the committee because they've had an impossible job. I think uh, like it's very difficult to, to select four teams and uh, really come across as, as fair, but as it relates to the analysis of UCF, it really it kept coming down to scheduling. Um, and even at times, it seemed like our wins against really good teams in our conference, even top 25 teams in our conference, weren't considered at the same weight as a Power 5 win against a team that maybe isn't nearly as good as some of the teams in our conference. So there's a, there's a bias there with the P5 that I think is, is real and exists. Um, but from a scheduling standpoint... So we have to have a certain strength of schedule, at least that's the narrative today, to warrant inclusion in a, in, in a playoff that determines the postseason for the sport. But the only way we can do that, at least in this week's, week's example, would be to set our student-athletes up at a competitive disadvantage, at an experiential disadvantage to another institution's student-athletes. I just don't think that's fair. And I also don't think the maturation of UCF as a football program, I don't think we're there anymore. I mean, we've just finished the last two regular seasons in the top ten. We've accomplished a lot. We've won two near six bowl games in the last five years. We're about to play in our third. We don't need to be doing two-for-ones. I don't think anybody 
in our position in college football would agree to do for a two-for-one, unless it was in our favor, because uh, I think our program is, is at that place. But, 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 but you understand that the two people in the Power Five, and I know what you've done the last two years, but they don't look at you and UCF as being any different. You're both members of the American you know, you're and both that's the problem. I state think schools in Florida. They, they got to look at what's what, what happens on the football field, and uh, if you do that, then I think we're we're pretty different. But so so go back to what you were just saying, and Danny White, UCF athletic director, with us here on Playbook about you know you're dealing with the inequality that is the FBS right now. But knowing that you're dealing with that, and they're not going to change their mentalities, don't you need to take those games, even if it does set you guys at a disadvantage? Um, no, I don't think that we need to. I think that. We need to keep, to use your phrase, looking inward and building our program uh, that, as we're doing every day. And it's my job as the leader of our athletics department to challenge these inequities, and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. It wasn't our phrase, by the way. You know that. Greg <laughs> yeah, Sankey. Yeah, we, we stole that Come from on. Greg Sankey. <laughs> so, but, so now we were going to ask you about the thought of, of potentially going independent before Barry Alvarez screwed up our great line of questioning. But, but, but it is interesting to me because I was thinking about this. Jason mentioned it on the show yesterday. If you, if you were independent and you played a schedule, say, like BYU played, and you went undefeated playing that schedule, I think you'd make the playoff. We may. You know, Notre Dame obviously just showed that an independent can make the playoff. Um, they obviously have probably the most blue blood brand name in college football. So right. They have that going for them. I think a lot of this kind of comes down to brands and we're building our brand shouldn't but i think it, it does um you know, we're, we're proud to be in the american I, I think if if folks would take a closer look at the level of football being played in the american i i think there should be a pass to the playoff i mean the temple team we beat was really good i mean they lost a couple games early uh, and then they figured out their quarterback situation and they i think they beat maryland by like 35 points Maryland beat Texas, and everybody's talking about tech, the winner of Texas, Oklahoma, potentially going. So I, I think that there's a lot of examples, if you look at our league, that we're just a whole lot better than people give us credit for. Um, you know, obviously going independent is a tough road to hoe, and BYU is experiencing those challenges. Uh, it's really hard when you don't have bowl games that you have access to and, and things like that. Uh, but I, I think that there's a path, especially with an expanded playoff, uh, to, to make it happen right from, from the league that we're in. Danny White with us here on Playbook, UCF Athletic Director. The other topic that's thrown around the last couple of days, the Big 12 should scoop up UCF. Is that being discussed? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking about. Uh, I know, uh, you know our, our focus is, again, just to continue building our program, and, and we're proud to be in the league that we're in. I think there's a great future. Uh, for UCF and the American. It's, it's a conference full of a lot of young universities like ours in big cities with great recruiting bases and huge upside. So uh, I think the future for the American is really bright. So I'm going to ask you what I asked you the other night, except now we're, we're on the radio. <laughs> you beat LSU, you hang another banner? I don't know. We're, we're going to make that decision uh, at the appropriate time. We're continuing to evaluate what goes on both. Like I mentioned last year, last year's national championship was as much about what our team accomplished and then, but also what happened around us across the country. Um, so we'll make that decision uh, when, when we get there. What, what have you tangibly gotten out of that? Aside from the fact that the, you got a national championship banner and the rings and the parade and all that stuff, but like, what have you seen in nine months, or I guess 12 months to this point, that you have received back or that the university has received by an undefeated season last year? Obviously another one this year, but... Yeah, um, well, 10,400 new season ticket holders. Wow. Uh, record fundraising at levels that we would never thought we'd see for such a, a young university and young athletic department. Applications are up double digits last year and this year to the university. I think it's it's provided such a positive spotlight for our university and it, not just what what our team accomplished in 2017 but the the conversation we've been fortunate enough to be a part of that i think really anybody that would have done what we did with the circumstances the way they were that played out i think there would they would have sparked this conversation that really needs to happen and that's why i'm so happy about the article that came out today and some of the comments that were made by people i really respect uh, in leadership positions uh, across the country uh, because ultimately this is what we've been saying all along is 
it, we declared a national championship because we didn't think that the, the current postseason format is adequate, and we weren't invited to it. Uh, and uh, we were, I think that was the 36th season in the history of college football that there was more than one national champion. Uh, and I'd, I'd love to see us finally figure out this postseason. We're the only sport in America that can't figure it out. Kind of switching gears, Danny, how is Mackenzie Milton doing? I think he's doing great. He's in good spirits. He's a fighter, obviously. I have such tremendous respect for, for Mackenzie. And uh, if there's anybody that can get through this energy, uh, this excuse me, this injury and and, and make it back uh, to doing what he loves, it's, it's him. And uh, I, I expect that to happen. We're, we're supporting him in any way we can. He's got great family support and all of uh, all the UCF family, obviously, is just surrounding him with support. And, um, but uh, he, he's doing good. How, how how did that work for you? I mean, obviously, with the team, and they have their own brotherhood, and you see that, and we've seen how there's been stories about how, but as an athletic director who's, who's player that is most recognizable at your university, along with, I guess, Taco Fall, who's 7'6", uh, how, <laughs> how, what, what, what happened to you when you saw that happen? You know, I, I think everybody in the building had the same reaction, and i tell you what was a, a pretty uh, cool moment and a great example of sportsmanship is seeing both teams react the way they did, both coaching staffs, both fan bases react the way that they did. Uh, it impacted everybody. I, you know, I, I was hurting for him and uh, feeling for his parents, for them to see what, you know, just the level of injury that that was. And um, so I, I rushed down to the, to the uh, field level. I was up in the suite at the time with some of our donors and got a chance to speak to McKenzie briefly before he uh, headed off to, uh, to the hospital in the ambulance. And uh, I thought what was, what was really powerful and kind of uh, a testament to the brotherhood you mentioned and just the, the family atmosphere in our football program was when uh, McKenzie's parents, they stayed behind for a few minutes until the end of the second quarter because they wanted to give our players uh, some words of encouragement and a hug on their way to the locker room at halftime. And I know that was impactful for our players. I think it had a big part in uh, how they played in the second half. And I just thought that was such a, a powerful thing for, uh, for the Miltons to do uh, before going off to the hospital to join their son. UCF Athletic Director Danny White with us here on Playbook. All right, so we finished where we started. Uh, the 18 playoff will happen when? I'd love to see it happen next year. I think that's probably unrealistic, though. Maybe we, maybe it can happen in 2020 as soon as possible. Let's get this thing right. I think it makes the whole back half of this of the regular season so much more compelling. Division races and conference would matter more. Uh, conference championships would matter more. It would get, finally get settled on the field, and uh, I, I, most importantly, it's yeah. the right thing to do for these kids. They work too hard. Their whole lives they work to get to play at the highest level of college football. Uh, and, and they deserve the opportunity to, se- to settle it on the field. Is there any concern that if they went to an eight team, that it wouldn't have an automatic spot for a group of five team? I don't. I don't. If it's going to be a true national championship, there has to be inclusion for all of FBS in some format. And I, I don't know the right way to do that. I mean, there's. I got a lot of ideas. There's a lot of different models, but I think we got enough smart people in, in college football that we can figure that figure it out. Thank you for the time, Danny. Really appreciate it. No question, guys. Appreciate you having me on. UCF Athletic Director Danny White. Um, yeah, our independence conversation kind of got taken oh, down yeah. by Barry Alvarez. Thank you, Barry Alvarez, for that. <laughs> but it, this is this is more realistic now. Yeah. So, and and he's right. Being the American is probably good for them <laughs> at this point. Now, you say best eight, and I would be fine with best eight, and I would love best eight, but I don't think that's realistic.